Another day, another dollar. It's another episode of the Easy Corner. My guest, Marcus Sloan, got him ranked the number one freshman in the city. Clear Falls High School zone. Also, Houston Hoops Blue Chips 15U EYBL Circuit zone. Orlando Horton, man. How you doing today? I'm good. How about you? Man, I'm good. I'm good. My first question. Obviously, we're going through a pandemic called this fucking shoot. Nobody can see. Talk about very tough experiences with Clear Falls because obviously from the outside looking in, I never saw Clear Falls play. But from the outside looking in, it's just like oh. like uh, you know, it's getting me to an image of what I can do. So it's fucking it like, your style because they play. So like, what did you think? It can be. I think we'll be close, but like we have up, we still fight. So I was in most of the game with a lot of trouble. game down, beat it up whenever I feel like it's needed. Get my teammates involved. So it's it's a it's a chip on my shoulder, but it's not that much pressure because like. I don't get scared. Like, I, I live for those moments, and I like those moments. You say you worked out with Coach Teddy Wheeler. This is a guy that's proven that he has top-level guards. He knows how to coach. He's one – I call him probably the best coach in the game. Like, he's the big – because he knows and understands and dissects the guard position. What are you learning from him? Because we all know what guards he's had. The, the, of course, Sabir Wheeler, the Quentin Grimes, the – more and more Colin Warrens, LJ Criers. You're the next up in those guards under his branch. What is he teaching you that that, that just amazes you about going to Coach Teddy Wheeler? Coach Teddy, he's a good coach. Like, he teaches me how to play at my own pace and not to let the defenders speed me up. Like, he taught me a lot. He taught me how to get my teammates involved better, how to work off the pick and roll, how to work off the ball screen. Uh, dribble handoff. He taught me a lot of guard standpoint. And then I work out with his older son, Savier. And mm-hmm. watching Savier play, I took a couple tools out of his bag, and yeah. they really helped. Do you, do you see similarities in his game? Because, honestly, I think you're that kind of point guard. Like, the guy that plays with heart, heart over height, I think, like, oh, number one, as soon as Song put you at number one, the first thing I thought was Savier. What do you learn from a guy that really literally held the mantle since day one, and what advice does he give you? Because Sabir was highly touted for a long time. That number, I don't think he has slipped far to number two. I think number two was his lowest ranking in this city. Number two, four years, const, the constant professional. What does he tell you? Because you guys are similar in stature, similar in, in, in styles of play. What does he tell you? He tell me to play at my own pace because we in workouts and he see me kind of speed my game up and let the defender speed me up. He remind me to slow down and play at my pace. And he he told me, like, it's hard over height. And, like, you can get it to it. You can get to it. And he mainly go to the basket. I, he He's very quick. And, like, I just want to do the same so I can get to the basket. And then when they start playing the basket, you have open jump shots because they try to stop you from attacking. You get more separation off the dribble. So I learned a lot from him. Can we talk about the Houston Hoops blue chips? Or can, can, we, can we talk about that now? Mm-hmm. Look, yeah, we can. Or, 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 or Wesley Yates, Corey Kelly, yeah. Zion Little, my guy Chris Johnson, Malik Presley, all yeah. and, and, and those boys. You guys have been here for so long. Like, it, 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 what at, – at, at, now – what 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 is really what do you guys expect from each other? Because obviously the media they're on your side, but some some medias do hate on you. As a yeah. group, as a collective unit, what do you guys expect from each other every time you guys step on a basketball court? Because it just looks like when you guys step on a basketball court, you guys are just not losing. Talk about that. Yeah. We expect all of we each other to go out and play our game and not to be scared because. Sometimes they, the media people, they boost matchups. And we think to ourselves, like, we know there's not going to be a close game. So we just get out there. We don't, we don't buy into it. We'll just get them on, get them out the way and be like, 
is what we came here for. We, we proved our point. We keep proving our point to every team that called us out. We beat the toughest 16U team. We beat, like, the best 17U team in Houston. We beat the defenders, the most hype match. We we still don't know why, but we we expect a lot from each other. Like, we, we, we live together. Talk about a little bit of your teammates right now. Honestly, this this was the first time I ever saw Wesley Yates play. I saw him at one time against Beaumont you know, when they played Dickinson, like the, his first game of the season. I wasn't really sold on him. I was okay, he got good side. I know he's a jump shooter. But after, the, after that Drive Nation game, the way he made plays and the way he made that final stop for you to hit the go-ahead bucket for the game winner, I actually want you to talk about uh, like just 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 your teammates in general, but like I wasn't sold on Wesley Yates until this weekend. I was like, oh yeah, th- that's what I want to see. So kind of just talk about yeah. talk about your teammates just a little bit because you've been with them for a very long Wes. time. Yeah, Wes a bucket. Oh, people sleep on Wes because they say he was slow and he couldn't move, but Wes improved his game a lot. Yeah. Like Wes can get everywhere he wants. Wes is fast. He he can jump now. He can. He been he would always been able to shoot, but now he got more stuff to his game. He added more stuff to his bag. Like, what's tough? What's yeah, no, I, I see. I, I saw the playmaking ability, and the and the one thing yeah. that I like about him is his composure. Like, he doesn't get too down. He doesn't get upset. It's just more like the same yeah. facial expression. It's just like, okay, I, I'm busting y'all. What y'all gonna do about it? You, you guys not gonna stop me. I'm gonna feed it, or I'm, or I'm gonna get a bucket. So like, I just like the way he played because I guess at Beaumont United, I really didn't get to see it because Kaysen obviously is on his team running the show. But like, I just feel like he played more freely. He played more freely in AAU. So that's what I'm talking about, Mr. Chris Johnson. What kind of swagger and attitude does he bring to your t- bring to your team? Because he's my guy. I. I, I I, I yeah. the first time I met Chris Johnson was last year at Lake Olympia Open Gym. My first thing that I said is, "Who let in the sixteen-year-old?" They were like, "No, coach, he's eighth grade." I said, "So talk about the swagger that he brings to your team." Because I saw the defenders game. I saw what he was saying. He was yeah. just like, "He's too small. I'm locked in. I'm locked in." Talk about because there's a big misconception about him. But I know that you guys know him better than every, anybody else. At the end of the day, I know he's just trying to win. Just talk about it. Chris Johnson bring that dog mentality. Like, he's not scared of nobody. Like, nobody at all. And he, he, like, get us hype. Because, like, he, man, he build everybody confidence from going on the court. He'll, like, tell us. He'll point out everybody's weakness. He'll know. He just know a lot about every player we play against. He get buckets, too. Like, he do everything. He play defense. He get buckets. He talk. He getting everybody head. So, like, yo, playing with Chris, he's playing. Mr. Z- and then you got your bulldozers, man. Mr. Zion Little, Mr. – obviously your teammate, Corey Kelly. Talk about yeah. them because, like I said, you've been on the big stage with them for such a long time. To still have them in this time of you guys' basketball career, what does it mean? Because, honestly, you guys, AAU, before you know it, two more years. That's it. It's winding down. So to have those guys along for the ride and to bring what they bring to the Houston Hoops, just talk about them a little bit. Zion and Corey, they bring a lot because they both love to play defense. And, like, they'll sit on everybody's best big, and they'll, they'll out-rebound everybody. They get boards. They they score in the paint a lot. Zion, very bouncy. So, like, he get up there, block every shot, dunk a lot, finish a lot. Corey, he plays amazing defense. Like, Corey can actually sit on guards. He can play bigs. Corey can guard every spot. He can rebound. He can score. There's a lot. Oh, them two can do a lot on the team, and they real slept on. Like, nobody don't get them the recognition they deserve, but they can play. They can talk, play. Talk about some of your other teammates, because I, I know I went with that team because I said I know that was kind of like the core of your team last year. But talk about guys like Malik Presley and every, and every on all the other plethora of people that you have on your team that we don't even know about. Yeah, Malik, Malik, I'm glad we picked him up. Him, um, Jaden, and Kendrick. But Malik, he can, he'll, he wasn't never scared. Like, everybody that just came, they played kind of nervous. But, like, Malik just came over and played. He played hard. 
and Malik, he he can get up. He got hops. He can he can do a lot. He he help us a lot. Uh, Kendrick, he another he another big body that can do everything. He real long. He can do everything on the court. And Jaden, he play good defense. He cut a lot. He score a lot. Yo, our team is really deep. How how upsetting that you guys didn't get a chance to showcase that across the country on the EYBO circuit because I know it's a pandemic, but I know through your mind, it's just like, dang, this was going to be our test, our bat, like battles, like our, when, because to me, you guys mission, honestly, I, it's getting to a point where I believe that you guys core, like the, the, the Zions, the Corey Kelly's, the Chris Johnson's, the Presley's and the, and the Wesley H. I really believe in my heart that you guys don't care about if you guys are the best in the state. You guys are trying to be the best in the country. So for you guys not to be on that EYBL circuit and showcase that, what goes through your team's mind? We was, we was frustrated because we really wanted to get out there and play. Because we played we play up last year in the EYBL. Like, we played 15s. We played Keontae, Cruz. We played a lot of top players in that class. And, it was fun, so we came a game short from getting invited to the P gym. So we felt some type of well about that. So we really wanted to go down there this year and show them that we the best team in the nation. And we can play on every level. So we was kind of frustrated we didn't get to play on that uh, big of a level. Play against, I mean, play in front of a lot of college coaches. Obviously, you've been with, with the Blue Chips for a long time. How? How has this Blue Chips organization just evolved? And, you know, you've been a main staple and a mainstay. Like playing with, like, LeBron James' son, Wes, was, and Zion Little was obviously still on your team then. But to know that you have an opportunity to just finish your career with a with an AAU team that you started, what has it just meant to you, knowing that you've been, like, a, a, a staple for the Blue Chips? And there's been great players throughout the city of Houston that's been through the Blue Chips organization. And shout-out to Coach Coach Clyde Jackson, who, 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 who has made one of the best programs in the country. Just talk about it. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's been a good, good experience because – I got to play with some of the best people in our class. I got to play with – I got to play with a lot of people, you know, a lot of big-time people. And then I got to play against the best people in our class. I played with and against the best people in our class. And But it's better when they on my team because, like, it's a lot of fun. When you play with us, we don't really run plays a lot. So we get up and down. And just to see everybody play is just fun. Cause, no, it's just fun to watch. I have a question. Um, I want to just kind of skip back to the to, to the school season. For the next yeah. probably three years, we're going to see the dynamic duos of Corey Kelly and Orlando Horton versus Zion Little and Marcus Smurf Millender. When those matchups happen, because I, to me, I think you you and and Smurf headline the two best point guards in the city in class of twenty twenty three. What is it like in those matchups when you, when you know when you know a team or know guys that well that I know though you guys are friends but the utmost respect but at the end of the day you guys are competitors how are those matchups like Yeah those those matchups fun like cuz we friends off the court but on the court we all have a killing mentality that we all want to win so we don't laugh at each other we take it very serious on the court it's like fun playing against each other because it just we've been doing it for a while now and it's just fun. What 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 did you guys always used to play against each other like in middle school too? No, not in middle school, but like AAU, we would run against each other. But okay. like well me and Smurf, we would, but me, Corey, Zion, we always played with each other. But yeah. me, Smurf, we used to play against each other every now and then, you no know, matchups and like that's the matchup everybody really wanna see when we play against each other, me and him. So, like, that is fun for everybody to come watch. Talk about what what does he bring out of you and what do you believe that you bring out of him? Because at the end of the day, like I said, I think that you guys are the two best point guards. It's two different styles, but, like, it's similar styles. But it's two different it, – it, it, but it's kind of two different styles. What Like, what does he bring out of you that you believe that – and what do you feel like you bring out of him when you guys are playing? Because it was actually a fun matchup, even though it was a do a dominant performance by you guys, he still did his thing. We 
we bring like the best out of each other. Like everything we have, we just bring it out on the court. Cause like he likes to like reach a lot and play up, and like that brings my quickness, explosion, all that out. And like I like to fall back a little bit when I play, but sometimes I get up in them, and like we just we just bring dog mentality out of each other, like that killer mindset. What are you most looking forward to to next year? Because, like, at the end of the day, like I said, there's a target on your back. But as much as it doesn't, you step in, I know you try to prove that you're one of the best players in high school throughout. So what, what are you kind of looking forward to next year? I'm looking forward to making it a deep run in the playoffs. I want to go to state. Like, I'm looking past, like, first round, second round. I want to go deep in the playoffs. I want to go to state. I'm, I'm looking to enjoy this uh, time with my uh, brothers. You know, I want to. I want to go to state for like, like my last three years of high school. Every year I want to go to state. I want to lead my team to state. I want to do the best I can to help us go to state and do what I have to do. Other than Corey Kelly, who else should we be looking out for at Clear Falls? Because we know, that, like I said, we you we know that you two are the main staples, the all districts. You're the leading scorer. Just j- just talk about the other guys that really don't get recognition at Clear Falls. Yeah. We have Carson. He knew a lot for us. He didn't get that much re- recognition last year, but Carson Lindsay, he did a lot. And we have Carson, Brandon, Quinn. Quinn did a lot, too. Like, he scored a ball in fast, played good defense. Uh, we had Vaughn. We had a lot of people on our team that didn't get the recognition, but they all played hard every game. Give me – Five 2023 guys that you would that, that you would run with, or four, four, no, four plus yourself, your, your, your team. Yeah, my team. I'll run with them anytime. Like, <laughs> if I had to choose, I would run with them. Like nobody else, I run with my squad. There has been a big conception right here in the city of um, well, well, in the state of Texas, that obviously that. Dallas it, 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 it is the guys that produce that, that, that produce the pros and the, and the McDonald's All Americans lately. Talk about just basketball as a whole in the city of Houston, how tough it is. Because I think that we can compete with Dallas, but like I've told people in I've told people in the past, I interviewed actually Wade Taylor and Manny Obaseki. I interviewed them. They their whole thing is more like. I think that, like, Dallas people are kind of just more friendly and more like they're all in the gym at once, which Houston yeah. people, I feel like when you hear the mess on Twitter and the gram, it separates. But I want to know from you, do you believe that's just media hyping it up or that's a true fact? No, that's media hyping it up. Cause Houston, we tough. We have a lot of we have a lot of dogs. But Dallas, they just got, like, better media like they have slam ball is life so like they got them cameramen in front of them with a lot of clout us houston we have cameramen but slam and ball is life like the two best cameramen in the game so of course dallas is gonna be the most hype but if you if they come to houston like they do dallas we will be way we'll have way more hype than the dallas players because houston really tough how much how, how much do you like believe in putting on for this city you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, like we've seen, you know, the who, you're you're the guy that's going to be carrying the mantle for, for for this city of Houston. So, how much do you like believe that you can put on for the city and say, "Hey, man, we actually the best city in the state of Texas." I, I, I try to put on every tournament we go. We all try to put on. Like we go to Dallas, we had a chip on our shoulder because they already say Dallas players better than us and we too so so every time we play a dallas team we we take that very seriously to like we feel like they disrespected us and like we just go out every day and prove well every time we play in dallas you know a dallas team we prove that we better and i i just i think we can easily stick with them and i'll take that role of leading us and showing people that houston has more talent than dallas you know 2023 how deep is this class? Because obviously you got the Houston hoops, but you guys got guys like Jacob Cole, Tyler Smith, Smurf Millinder, uh, Jalen Bernard, um, Jaden Nunn. Like, how deep is this class? When you see your class, how does it match up against some of these other classes in Houston? Like 20, 2020, obviously LJ and 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 um 
LJ and Traymond. You got 2021, guys like Big Deuce, RJ Keen, um, Damari. So, like, 2020, um, 2022. Obviously, Griggs is gone, but you still got Kimo Millinder, Sean Jones, guys like that. So, how does your tw- how do you believe your 2023 class in the city match up, or not even match up? Like, where does it rank to you? Man, I think we're the best class in Houston. That's what I think. Cause like, we are deep. Like, we have a lot of people that can play. Like, if we we have the best kids in Houston on our team, but in other teams. They got kids that can go that's top in Houston too. So like, that we tough. We I think we can compete with any grade in the uh, city. This is one of my favorite parts of the show. So, give me your top five players in the league right now in the NBA right now. Oh, that LeBron number one, LeBron KD number, number two, yeah. KD number two, Giannis. Still, and I'll say James Harden. Okay. Give me, top five give me your top five favorites. Oh, my top five favorites? No. Oh, my favorite. LeBron, yeah. KD, Kyrie. Uh, I like Luka a lot. Okay. And uh, and I like John Morant game, too. He's okay. a rookie, but I like John Morant, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, and give me your top five of all time. Uh, all the time, Kobe, Kobe, Michael Jordan, Mike, yeah, Michael Jordan, LeBron, he automatically, you know, yeah, and then I say Will, okay, and uh, probably I go with Jerry Riss, Jerry West. That's okay. what I go with. I haven't done this one, but I'm gonna give you another top five since you're the point guard. Give me your top five point guards in the league right now, right now, even like, 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 not, not in the bubble, but like right now, like. Top right five. Now? If they're all healthy, if they're all healthy, who's your top five point? Kyrie, Curry, Damian Lillard, Ja Morant. I'm gonna go with him. Okay. He tough okay. and James. Okay. Nah, not James Harden. Russell Westbrook. Oh, okay. Uh, Thank you. Because Russell Westbrook is my favorite player. I just said, man. Yeah, I Russell Westbrook. He a top. Talk about a little bit about your family. Talk about your your mom and your pops. We know your pops been coaching you and been working you out. But at the end of the day, before that you were Orlando Horton Jr., the basketball player, you're Orlando Horton, the teenager, the guy that's about to transition into the young adult. What does your parents tell you? And what and how much have they meant to you, not only in your career, but your development as a young man? My parents mean a lot to me. Like, my dad, he's with me every step of the way. Like, he put me in the best positions I can be in. He always tells me that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Then uh, my mom always tells me to keep God first because, like, I'm very blessed. I'm a very blessed child. And my mom, she couldn't make some of the district games this year, but, like, she'll always be with me. She'll text me before every game and, like, tell me good luck and what I need to do. So, like, I really thank my parents for all they do for me because they do a lot for me. And talk about the rest of your family, how much they've meant to you and the journey that – that because at the end of the day, like I said, man, like, who, like right now I'm talking to the number one player in the city. Right now, like, their son is the number one player in the city. Obviously, we know that – the competitor that you are, we know that you have more work to do. It doesn't stop in the city. Also, the state, and I know it starts in, in, and also stops stops in the country with you. But just like talk about the rest of your family and just knowing the journey that that, that you've been on, they've been with you. My whole family, they support me big. But my little brother, I, uh, him, he. He, he think he can beat me all the time. Like, he stay on me. Like, he'll tell me. Like, when I'm doing bad, he'll make sure I know I'm doing bad and I'm not doing the right thing. My sister, like, when my dad can't take me to some practice, she's there always take me there. She'll see me. My sister do a lot. Uh, yeah, like, they do a lot. My granddad, he called me, like, after every single game and asked me how I've been and all that. And, I just thank all of them for that. And my dad, friends, his close friends, like, they always motivate me to keep going. They tell me how big I can be and all that. So I thank my family for that a lot. You got some offers, you know, Alabama State, Alabama State 
um, Jackson State and stuff like that to get offers young. What 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 did that do for your confidence? Because many guys are not in their position. You got seniors right now that are still looking for a college to play in, and you got the offers to come play as a as a freshman. So like, just talk about those offers and what it just meant to you, just starting you, and you just getting started. Yeah, it boosted my confidence even more, and like it made me want it even more because it's like I know I got offers now, so I just think to myself like. I can really be big because I'm a freshman with three offers and I got a lot of interest. So I, I just like, I thank God I'm in the position I am now. Can you talk about the game on Sunday, the game winner on Sunday? Like what, 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 what goes through your mind in, 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 in moments like that? 17U team, Drive Nation, Houston, a team that's been, been wreaking havoc all summer in this city. And obviously you, you, it, it was a tie game, right? It was a tie game. It was a yeah, tight game. You, 65, you come 65. off, little lefty hezzy, finish with the right, game time, Orlando Horton. You guys you guys get it with the win. Just talk about moments like that, like you said, man. But just talk, also talk about that game on Sunday because you guys were down damn near the whole game. And obviously, yeah. I don't know what was said. I don't know what – what what was going on? But I was standing next to to Clyde Jackson, and he was just like, "Oh no 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 no! This is what we gonna do. This is what we gonna do." Talk about yeah. moments like that, man. Uh, our coach, like he was when he called the timeout, he because he sent me attack that big like twice, and I scored them two times. So like we was in a huddle, he was telling all he was like the big. He's not as quick as us, so like we can easily do a move and get bomb and do a like score. And he wanted us to settle. So, like, I was living for that moment because, like, I was feeling it because, like, I just scored twice. So, I was like, I'm going to just attack this big and score. But I didn't expect it to be that easy. I thought it would be a little bit more challenging. But, like, it was easy. And I was I was very excited because that was my first game winner. So, I was excited. And Coach, he, he really didn't. He told us to pick it up. But, like, we discussed that with ourselves. Like, we didn't discuss it. Like, we all, like, no, I, saw, you know, no, no I was there. I, I saw you guys in a timeout. Yeah. Like, your coach wasn't even really looking at yeah. y'all. Like, I saw Chris, Zion, and you know, Zion didn't play. I saw you guys all just talking to each other. Like, when they called the timeout, like, I, I actually saw, like, coach was just chilling, like, on the side. Yeah. Like, you you guys know what to do. Coach Allen, yeah. Coach Allen, he, he know what we can do. Like, he'll put us in a position, but he let us, like, do it. And, like, when we see West start playing defense like that, it got us going, then Chris started playing defense, then we all started playing defense. We all started playing defense. We all started locking in together. It just got fun because, like, we just went on a run. The – what's going on – obviously, we got a pandemic going around the world, but I've been asking everybody the, the, this question that I've interviewed, especially the young African-Americans. We know what's going on around the world with police brutality. What is your family – letting you know because obviously you're a young african-american male like that can happen to anybody not just african-american but we see this br br police brutality that's going on in the world your thoughts and your opinions because at the end of the day like we i know we have covid but we know like you guys wore that doia on your jersey you know just the black Lives matter movie you guys are representing what is your thoughts mm. My thoughts, like, that we just need to come together as one, even though the police brutality and all that, but, like, it's not just the police, even though it is, but, like, we have black-on-blacks killing each other, teenagers killing each other, so, like, we can stop the violence there, and then we can look at it bigger so, like, the police brutality can stop, because they really look at us some type of way. They don't look at us, like, as normal Americans, because, like, they think we all game bangers, we all drug dealers. They think we all that type. So, like, my mom, she always tell me to carry myself uh, presentable. Everywhere I go, she makes sure I don't slack not one bit. Like, she'll make sure I have something done in my head, or she just makes sure I'm in the right position and nothing, so nothing can happen to me. When you see, obviously, you your role models are the professional athletes. When you see the stance they're taking, against like the police brutality during the game obviously wearing the jerseys not really you know kneeling for the anthem when you see the professional and the professional athletes and the way they're handling what goes through your mind i feel like we can all do it when i see them do it it just 
give us more confidence to do it. Because you see people like that do it. It just boosts everyone's confidence to do it. And, like, we all just want to take the stand of Black Lives Matter. How important do you think that sports has just – sports, like, their way of healing the world. Obviously, we're going through a pandemic during COVID. And, obviously, like I said, the police brutality. How, in, how important has sports been this summer – to, to, to the whole country? I think sports was very helpful because when I play, I stop thinking about certain things. Like, I don't think about nothing when I play. So, like, I know when I'm playing, I'm safe. And, like, I feel like that's the way with everyone else because with sports, you stay out of trouble with all that. So, you just on a court or on a field, you just take care of business. And my last question. How has basketball shaped you as the man that you are today? Basketball, it, it helped me a lot because I started seeing a lot that I didn't see before. So, like, and then with basketball, I, I like playing a sport, and it's fun to me. So I try to do the best I can to continue to play the game and just, just play. Go ahead, bro. Throw out your – Social media, give me a snap. No, no, no. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snap. Yeah. Go ahead, throw all that out here, man. Uh, my Instagram is Orlando Horton Jr. My Twitter is Orlando Horton Jr. And my Snapchat is Lil Shifty 12. No TikTok? I don't be on TikTok. <laughs> You're too busy in the gym. I don't be, <laughs> yeah, I don't be on TikTok. I don't be having time for TikTok. I I. I live in a gym, so I go to the gym, come home, sleep, take my shower, and spend family time. That's all I do. Is there a chance that you guys can get the Houston Hoops together and go and get on my show? Because that's what I've really just been waiting for. Chris Johnson said he's about it. I already know he's about it. That's why I really I didn't get to really put out his interview. But he said he's about it. He said, let me know. He, I'll get all of them, and we'll deliver that message. I was like, we, I got we can. you. We can. I got Chris Lockett. Chris Lockett in here now. I hey, listen, my house now. Let, let me know this week if we can get that done. Because, like, I, I, I want that. I want that smoke. Yeah. I want you guys to answer the questions and everything. All right, we got you. I'm going I'm to get it together. I'm going I'm to text the uh, group chat now. I appreciate that, man. I am the Easy Corner. Follow me on Instagram at the Easy Corner. Also, follow me on Twitter at Easy underscore Corner One. It's been a pleasure, Orlando, man. I appreciate you coming on the show. Man, we're sitting here with the number one freshman in the city, Orlando Horton. I appreciate it. Hopefully, we get the Houston hoops for the next show. Orlando said he's working on it. We'll see you next time. All right. Appreciate it, dog. Thank you.